a proud occasion for St. Albert's College to be honored by eminent personalities who have proved their role and dedication towards a sustainable environment and optimum utilization of natural resources. I'm extremely happy to introduce the vibrant moderator of this, of this plenary session, Dr. Emil Joseph, Principal, St. Albert's College, Ernaitler. I, on behalf of Commerce Department and all of us gathered here, extend to you a warm welcome, sir. Let me welcome the panel members who are about to invest their ideas in this fruitful session. To begin with, Dr. M.K. Prasad, who is an educator and environmental activist. He retired as a pro vice chancellor of Calcutt University after serving the collegiate education department in various capacities as lecturer, professor, principal, and deputy director. He was a former president of the Kerala Shastra Sahitya Parishad an organization working at the grassroots level towards the conservation and sustainable use of natural resources. He spearheaded the historical Silent Valley movement in 1978. On behalf of St. Albert's College, a hearty welcome, sir, to this conference. We have Dr. N. Shudodhanan, retired deputy director, animal husbandry department, Kerala. He is a well-known farm consultant farm and farm designing expert. He is also a project consultant of NABAD and Kerala State Planning Board who will share with us his expertise in livestock management. Management staff and students of St. Albert's College is honored to welcome you to this session. <laughs> Dr. M. Hari Krishnan, who is the director, School of Industrial Fisheries, QZAT, is known for his knowledge regarding fisheries. He has 18 years of teaching experience, 25 years of research experience, <coughs> and two years of experience as fisheries extension officer. He has published 54 research papers and has undertaken five research projects. He will be delivering a session on fisheries. A cordial welcome to you, sir. One of the challenging, challenging aspects of post-flood Kerala is its agriculture that should play a crucial role in rebuilding the state. Dr. Lena Matthew, head Rice Research Center, will be handling the session on agricultural scenario of Kerala. A gracious welcome to you, ma'am, from the Albertian family. <laughs> Dr. G. D. Martin from sorry, uh, in the field of med uh, medicine, we have. Dr. Sister Annie Sheila, who is the director of PS Mission Hospital and a cardiac surgeon, will enlighten us about the role of medicine in rebuilding Kerala. A warm welcome to you, sister. <laughs> the right person to talk about healthcare in rebuilding Kerala is Dr. Ambli Nair from Hazelt University, Belgium. She is known for her commitment towards social upliftment and selfless service. Though her physical presence is not here due to health reasons, she has sent a PPT and report on the topic health care. So, a hearty welcome to Amrina Ram also. <laughs> Last but not the least, I would like to extend a warm, sincere welcome to each one of you gathered here. Hope you have a rewarding experience. Thank you. Over to the moderator of the session. Thank you. In fact, we are running short of time. The session was about to start by 10, 10 a.m., but it's already 10.45. So, I am rushing through this. Um, my introductory comments on this plenary, first plenary session. We are dealing with the topics like agriculture, fisheries, livestock management, ecosystem, water and river management, medical, healthcare aspects, and it will be followed by open discussion. First of all, uh, we have the experts in this 
respective sessions. If you look at the agriculture se se uh, sector, the total loss is actually 1,345 crores, affecting the 3.09 lakhs of farmers. A lot of things are actually coming under this topic, which includes the damage to banana, rubber, nutmeg, coconut, tapioca, paddy, etc. And also the issues like the structural changes of the soil, variation in soil structure, how to regain the bird fertility of the soil, measures to restrict bacterial and fungal diseases, and attempt to study the health status of the soil. Fisheries sector, the total estimated loss is about 16.1 crores. But there is drastic reduction in the fish availability leading to the unemployment, damage to fishing vessels and gears. For example, about 150 Chinese nets were lost. Destruction to natural habitat and niche. Loss of breeding grounds. Disappearance of a variety of endemic species. Proliferation of alien species. Threat to indigenous species. Changes in the physical chemical parameters of affected land and aquatic systems, its reflections on the primary productivity and changes in the biodiversity. Similarly, livestock was also affected in a very rampant manner. It is estimated that 3,610 3, cows, the cattle were actually died, and also it affected the poultry, agriculture, silviculture, cattle farming, piggery, etc. Ecosystem management. Actually, I am remembering the comment of the Gardner, Professor Gardner. He called this disaster as a man made disaster. We have to debate on that. And it is mainly because of the result of the unscientific, unethical, and unscrupulous land use pattern. Here, we need a paradigm shift, a profound change in the perception of the development itself. Kerala society need to reorient its relation with the nature, he commented. Now the flood could have extracted a heavy toll on the rich biodiversity and ecology of Western Ghats. Now 6,000 tons of flood waste has been accumulated in our scenario. Coming to the water and river management, uh, we had a small interaction with the Dutch people. He came to our CR for the CR airport management. They said that every drop of water they are managing. They are managing every drop of water. So they are facing the flood from the rivers on one side and also they are affected by the flood, the surge from the coast side. But they are managing. After so many years of the study, they are managing it. So we can adopt some formulas like that. And also we have the session on the medical and health. As we know, the spurt of the a lot of uh, diseases like leptospirosis, fever, hepatitis, waterborne diseases, dysentery, dengue, chickenpox, etc. They are all affecting the Kerala community. With this introduction, I invite Dr. Rina Matthew for the presentation on agriculture.